August 6th, the Transfiguration of Our Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves and was transfigured before them. And his face shone as the sun and his garments became white as snow. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elias talking together with him. Then Peter addressed Jesus saying, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us set up three tents here, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. As he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice came out of the cloud and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And on hearing it, the disciples fell on their faces and were exceedingly afraid. And Jesus came near and touched them, and said to them, Arise, do not be afraid. But lifting up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And they were coming down from the mountain. Jesus cautioned them, saying, Tell the vision to no one till the Son of Man has risen from the dead. Today's commentary on the transfiguration of our Lord is taken from Father Paolo Norton. St. Thomas Aquinas comments that in the transfiguration, the whole trinity appeared, the Father in the voice, the Son in the man, the Spirit in the luminous cloud, and it emphasizes that the transfiguration is like a grand culmination of the preaching of Christ. It is also the counterpart to the temptations he suffered in the desert. In the desert, the devil tempted him. Here, at the transfiguration, two saints accompany him. There, Satan quoted the law and the prophets to tempt him. Here, the most important representatives of the law and the prophets appear alongside him to support him. There, he was hungry and humbled. Here, he appears full of glory and power. There, he showed that he was a man. Here, he shows that he is God. Christ was transfigured to give to his disciples and to us a glimpse of the glory of heaven, so they no longer wanted to leave from there, although at first they did feel fear. The apostles needed this miracle to withstand the sufferings and persecutions they were going to receive in the name of Christ. Although this episode of the transfiguration is sublime, it is intimately linked to the passion. Christ spoke with Moses and Elias of his passion, and immediately after, on the descent from the mountain, he announced to his disciples the sufferings he would have to pass through. The transfiguration also tells us something about our resurrection. Our flesh will be resurrected with the glorious characteristics of impassibility, lightness, and radiance, like the resurrected body of Christ. That is, the body can no longer suffer. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more, nor mourning, nor crying, nor sorrow shall be any more, says the Apocalypse. The glorious bodies will be able to move anywhere at will, to enter a closed room with its locked doors as Christ did, and they will possess the greatest beauty. But for now, we are still in the battle, and we have to continue to act. We cannot pretend to make three huts and sit down to rest just to contemplate God and enjoy His presence. Certainly, we must contemplate Christ, but we must continue to act. That is why we always have to descend from the mountain. May God give us the grace to stand firm, fighting the good fight of faith, doing all we can so Christ reigns, and also trusting in his divine will and the powerful intercession of his blessed mother for all that we cannot achieve by ourselves.